In this program, we're going to take a look at a concept called resonance and how it applies to covalent bonding. Resonance is defined as when there are more than one valid Lewis formula for a substance. So let's consider ozone again. Remember, it's O3. So three oxygens, six valence electrons each, means my picture must have a total of 18 or nine pairs. Let's put our oxygens three in a row. We'll put a pair between those oxygens. We'll complete the octets of the species on the outside. At that point, I've used up 16 of the electrons. I'll give the remaining pair to the central oxygen. Examination of that central oxygen indicates that it's short electrons. It doesn't have a stable octet. So to resolve this situation, I'm going to take, say, that pair, and I'll move it in here, creating a valid Lewis formula. However, I could have approached this problem another way. Again, let's take a look at our three oxygens. I put the pairs here, complete the octets of the atoms on the outside, and there's one pair here. My second choice would have been to move electrons from this end of the molecule into here. Which one's right? Well, they're both right. They're both equally valid. These are considered to be the Lewis formula, or what we call the resonance structures of ozone. Another way to represent this picture is in what we call a hybrid model. Hybrid refers to mixing. So we could consider to have three oxygens, a single bond, a single bond. And then there are some pairs that were never involved in either of our two options. And we now show sometimes there's a double bond here and sometimes there's a double bond here. This dashed pair represents what we call delocalized electrons. These particular electrons are free to move and in fact spend 50% of their time at this location and the other 50% of their time at the other location. This gives rise to what we call a bond order of one and a half. It's neither a single bond nor a double bond but lies exactly between the two. As a result, the properties in terms of length and strength of bond lie between those of a single bond and a double bond. So here's some data from our IB data booklet. The oxygen-oxygen single bond, I have both its length and its strength. And similarly, for O2, I've got its length and strength. Well, let's now take a look at where this lies, the oxygen with the delocalized electrons, the bond order of one and a half. Examining the web, we can find some values for these. First of all, the length of the bond is given as 128 picometers, lying between a single and a double bond. Similarly, its strength also lies in between them at 364 kilojoules per mole. So, Let's take this idea of resonance structures and see how it applies to the following question. Here we're asked to compare the bond length of the carbon-oxygen bond in the following four substances. To start this problem, I'm going to consider their Lewis structures. I'm going to start with carbon dioxide. Four valence electrons from the carbon, and two oxygens at six valence electrons each. This gives rise to 16 electrons, or eight pairs. I'll put the carbon in the middle and the oxygens on either end. I'll put a bond here and here. I'll complete their octets. And I've used up all 16. I can see that the carbon in the center is not satisfied, so I'm going to move two pairs of electrons into that location to satisfy. So here I have an example of a double bond.
let's go to carbon monoxide. Four valence electrons from the carbon, six from the oxygen, gives me a total of 10. Carbon, oxygen, I'll put a pair here. I'll complete the octets and I have one pair left. That uses up all 10 electrons. I can see that the carbon's not satisfied. I'm gonna have to move two pair in to satisfy it. So I'll now get that kind of arrangement. So here I have a triple bond. Now the carbonate ion. Four for the carbon, three oxygens at six apiece, and two extra because of the charge. That gives me a total of 24 or 12 pair. Carbon in the middle, surround it now by three oxygens. I'll put the first pairs here, here, and here, and I'll complete the octets of the atoms on the outside. Now I'll put this in square brackets because it is an ion. Now the central carbon's not satisfied. So I could take that pair of electrons and move it in here to satisfy it. That would be one possible structure. But I could have also moved in, say that pair instead or that pair instead. This structure exhibits resonance. So let's take a look at the resonance hybrid that would form here. Carbon, oxygens. The double bond could have existed here, here, or here. And the lone pairs I'll just complete them here and two minus. So here we have a substance that has got something that lies between a single and a double bond. And in this case, because we could spend 33% or a third of the time here, or 33% of the time here, or 33% here, we would say the bond order here is about one Point three, meaning the bond is equivalent to sort of like one in a third bonds. And lastly, CH3OH, carbon has four, the hydrogen there three, oxygen six, and that one remaining hydrogen another one brings me to a total of 14. Now this molecule has this particular arrangement, carbon with three hydrogens surrounding it, and then an oxygen and a further hydrogen. You'll learn a little bit more about drawing this one in organic chemistry, but here would be an appropriate structure for it. I've used up 10, 11, 12, 14. So there's the structure for it. There are no other possible structures, and here I have but a single bond. So examining what I have here, the double, the triple, the one and a third bonds, and the single bond, the one that's gonna be the shortest is the triple bond. So this is gonna be my shortest. The longest will be my single bond. So if I look at listing them in order, carbon monoxide would be at the shortest end moving up to my CH3OH. Now to separate the other two, if I look at a double bond versus one and a third bonds, a double bond would be a shorter bond. There's greater number of electrons to pull the nuclei in. So that's gonna be here, followed by the carbonate ion. So in terms of length, that's our sequence. So again, resonance occurs when we have equally valid Lewis structures for a particular formula. Thanks for watching.